This is another edition of Eyes on Education. I'm your host, Nicole Jackson. Our guest today is Dr. Sean Israel. He's the author of the book, 12 Laws of Urban School Leadership, and one of the leading voices in urban school reform. He'll be here to talk with me about his new book and other current topics in education. Again, welcome, Dr. Israel. Please tell our viewers a little about yourself. Well, I started my uh, career in education in 1997 as a social studies teacher. In 2004, I moved into school administration. Um, around 2009, I formed a company called Education Practitioners for Better Schools. Uh, this company is designed to provide uh, professional development and enrichment services for daycare providers, uh, school staff members, and also parents. And somewhere within all of that, I was able to write a few books. Tell me a little bit about your book and what was the motivation for writing your new book, The 12 Laws of Urban School Leadership. Well, I, the book is designed for principals and aspiring school leaders. I wanted to uh, write a book that was directly connected to the realities of the position. There are a lot of books on the market today that are uh, written from a th theoretical perspective. Uh, I wanted my book to give principals a more visceral connection to what's actually going on in schools especially urban schools with a history of failure. Um, I've learned from my experiences and my background that there are certain things that effective principals do to uh, maintain their schools and also to, to uh, uh, foster positive reform. And my book, The 12 Laws of Urban School Leadership, is a resource that principals can use to, to not only inform them of the realities of the position, but it also will help them in their decision making as they move to, through the various, various obstacles. Without revealing too much of your book, can you talk a little bit about one of the laws in your book? Yes, one of the laws in the book is for principals to be visible and mobile within the school. Uh, too often, principals are confined to the office. They're shuffling papers, answering emails, returning calls, or even worse, they're pulled out of the building uh, to attend meetings at central office and various other places. I believe that principals should be visible within the school. They need to be in the hallways, classrooms, playground, locker rooms, any place where there's people, the principal should be. Uh, this will help them to develop a keen understanding of events that are shaping the school and also to uh, understand the culture of the school and what should and shouldn't be done for effective reform. When you read about school reform today, there is a lot of attention placed on improving classroom instruction. How does this book inform principals on how to improve classroom instruction? Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's actually one of the laws in the book, improving classroom instruction. Well, I think in order for principals to improve classroom instruction, they must do a couple things simultaneously. First, they must hire the right teachers. Two, they must provide uh, quality professional development for teachers. And three, they need to provide uh, timely and accurate feedback to teachers. Uh, this is important because teachers are on the front lines every day. They interact with students on a daily basis, and therefore uh, it's imperative that effective principals uh, provide these things uh, for teachers and give them the resources that they need in order for them to do their jobs effectively. Even though your book can be used by principals who mm -hmm. work in all settings, why do you put the most emphasis on urban schools in particular? Well, I put the most emphasis on urban schools for several reasons. Uh, first, I believe that urban schools are inherently different than any other school setting. Uh, and when I say school, setting, school settings, I'm talking in particular to private schools, uh, parochial schools, uh, magnet schools, suburban schools. Uh, and I mention these school settings because um, urban schools deal with a higher concentration of students who come from families who live in poverty or low socioeconomic status. They also serve higher concentrations of students who um, uh, have special needs and have uh, multiple and diverse uh, ethnic backgrounds and languages. Um, also, my emphasis on urban schools is because uh, I'm a product of urban schools. I grew up in um, an urban environment. I attended urban schools as a student, uh, later became a teacher and administrator in urban schools. So I want to use my unique, pers unique perspective to provide resources to help improve urban schools. 
A lot of discourse surrounding school reform is centered on classroom teachers, but your book places principals as the focal point. Why do you place more emphasis on principals than the classroom teachers? Well, I put more emphasis on principals because principals sit in the seat of decision making, and the decisions that they make will have bearing on whether the school move forward or whether it stay in the basement of failure. This is why it's important that principals be trained and have adequate resources so that they make the best decisions for the entire school community. Now, many principals who work in, our, in urban schools often say they struggle with fostering parental involvement. Why do you think parental involvement is a problem for urban schools, and what can be done about it? Parental involvement is a huge problem for urban schools. Reason being is that many parents are disconnected from the school and they're disconnected from the educational development of their children. Uh, when you're talking about parents who live in poverty or low socioeconomic status, many of them may have had negative uh, school experiences themselves or they're disgruntled about the current state of the schools, uh, or that the current state the schools are in right now. Um, Schools also, urban schools, they don't make uh, the situation any better because many of them are not the most inviting places to visit. Uh, many of them have uh, security, high level security, which is needed, but a lot of parents, when they come through the school doors, they have to basically disrobe in order to get through. And once they get past security, they come to the main office and they're uh, not greeted in a friendly manner by the office staff. And then in order to see the principal or the school official who they uh, had the appointment for, they often have to wait uh, long after their initial appointment. Uh, a friend of mine uh, made a joke one day saying that in order to see uh, her school, uh, her child's, uh, the principal at her child's school, uh, it was often uh, similar to going to the hairdresser. It was an all-day event. So uh, it, it really shouldn't be that way. Um, um, principals, they need to foster uh, parental engagement uh, so that parents feel more connected to the school and what sits at the heart of parental engagement is uh, having parents sit at the seat of decision making. Now in order to facilitate that you have to buy the book. All right? I'm not going to give all the tidbits. <laughs> but, 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 but seriously, uh, I, you know, I made a little joke about that but uh, really to foster parental engagement uh, is different. There's no one cookie cutter approach. So there's not, a lot of principals uh, try to um, uh, foster parental engagement by having, uh, uh, offering food and other little um, frivolous incentives, but those things do not really get at the heart of what parents truly desire. Principals have to spend a lot of time with parents and understand their needs, their wants and desires, and through that uh, discourse and conversation, uh, they'll be able to understand how to connect with parents and how to foster uh, parental uh, engagement in, in, the, in the best possible way for the school and the greater community. In your book, you spend a lot of time talking about teacher morale. How can principals improve teacher morale in their schools? Right, and that is a huge problem for urban schools. But I think principals can instantly improve teacher morale by doing three things. Number one, they have to provide teachers with timely and accurate feedback. Two, they have to acknowledge uh, and celebrate their successes, and three, they must provide teachers with a certain level of autonomy over their work. Too often, uh, mandates are given to teachers by principals, and teachers feel like they're being told what, when, and how to teach. Uh, I'm espoused to the philosophy that principals should merely provide the framework for teachers and allow teachers the freedom to decide how they're going to deliver instructions to students. Before we finish here, Dr. Israel, I must ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Many schools have struggled with student discipline. Right. How can principals work to curb student behavior problems and make schools more safe, especially with issues such as bullying? Right. Well, I think one of the most potent ways principals can work to curb student discipline issues is to uh, basically create a system-wide positive-based supports that, that reward students for positive behavior instead of putting most of the attention on negative behavior. Because once you really look at it, especially when you're dealing with students that come from poverty and so low socioeconomic status, many of the behaviors that they uh, display is a direct result of uh, what's necessary to survive in their volatile neighborhoods. And a lot of times, principals meet those behaviors with suspension or expulsion. 
and you and I both know that that's not the right remedy. Exactly. So I believe that principals need to develop a system-wide approach that rewards positive behaviors because effective principals, they develop these type of systems and these systems are, are shared and fostered throughout the whole school with every employee in every classroom in every corner of the building. And effective principals also uh, model proper behavior and show students the difference between uh, behaviors that are acceptable at home, in their neighborhood, in the library, in the hallways, in the cafeteria. Because students need to know how to adjust and how to, to conform their behavior to the situation and the environment they're in. Thanks for stopping by and talking with me today. How can someone find more information about your books if they're interested? Uh, well, they can find my book uh, uh, several different ways. Uh, they can find it through Amazon.com. They can find it through my website, which is uh, www.shanisrael.com, spelled S-E-A-N-Y-I-S-R-A-E-L. They can also find it through the publisher, which is Rowan and Littlefield Education. And they also can uh, locate me through my uh, company's website, which is Edu Educational Practitioners for Better Schools, which is www.epbstraining.com. And last but definitely not least, uh, you can uh, find my book. Uh, it'll be in stores nationwide starting in June 2012. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You're